Hey everybody. So I'm not sure where I'm going with this exactly, but I, the, over the last couple of weeks, I've been reading a little bit on philosophy and watching some things on philosophy. And I thought I'd share, I don't know that I've learned anything, but I found some of this interesting. I wrote, you know, just pages and pages of, of notes. Um, and I thought I'd sort of share my thoughts. And bear with me, we might bounce around a little bit, but I think it sort of begins with the concept of nihilism, which in very, in, in very, very simple terms, it's, it's essentially a, a, a concept that life has no meaning and the universe is essentially here for no reason at all. Um, for those of you who are Coen Brothers fans, uh, you know, the big Lebowski, had some nihilist, and uh, I believe the line is, we believe in nothing, Lubowski, nothing. Um, and I think that uh, philosophy sort of came about or, or became somewhat popular because of existentialism, which is a, a philosophy that's been somewhat popular for the last, I, I don't know, 100 years or so, I suppose. And, and the main idea of, ex, of, of existentialism is that, you know, for the most part, we've sort of established that we're not really here for some sort of divine or re religious reasons, organized re religious reasons. I'm not here to attack faith. Um, and the world doesn't, doesn't have an absolute uh, purpose. But, but maybe that's an amazing thing because, assuming that's true, we officially have no chains or, 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 or shackles holding us down. Um, we can do, you know, what, whatever we whatever we want to do. We're not beholden to any god, any king, uh, to, to anyone. And of course, first and foremost, um, you're not an employee. You're not a citizen of anything. You are first and foremost just a person, a, a singular being, if you will. Now, having said that, that's like, oh my god, I have complete freedom. I I can do whatever I want. But that means every decision is your own, but that also means that there's no God or king or government that's coming to, uh, uh, that's coming to your rescue or, or salvation. You are on your own. Anyway. Um, and I see why people, uh, from an existentialism standpoint, when you look around, you think of... Um, Corporations and billionaires, they, they, they certainly don't seem to have it all together. They certainly don't have the best interests of anybody but themselves in mind. Um, they certainly don't seem particularly happy. Um, most politicians all seem pretty corruptible. Um, they seem generally petty and certainly don't have the best interest of the people that they were uh, uh, supposed to represent. Um, and then getting back to organized religion, I, I, you know, I struggle. I don't know that I can follow really anybody or anything that dresses like this. Take, take a look at these pictures. Right, they look like chess pieces. It's hard to take a guy serious in that kind of hat, right? Um, I, I don't know. But, but the beauty of all that madness and anarchy in existentialism is, is that you can sort of create your own meaning of what life or your life is. Life's not something that's done to oneself. Life is something that one does, right? Does that make sense? Well, there was this cat named Albert Camus, and I think he was born in like 1913 or 14, and he died, I think 1960, 59, 60, 61. Kind of an interesting guy. He was a, a French philosopher, and he sort of offered a, a fresh perspective, and, and he wasn't the first to come up with this. Um, he was building off uh, ideas of other philosophers like Surin, I think it's Kuringard, and, and some others. And his perspective 
is kind of called absurdism. Now, Camus did agree with some of the tenets of, of existentialism, but overall, he, he wasn't buying it. He's like, I'm, I'm not buying this because... Um, freedom is cool and what comes with that but the reality is mankind or, or humankind craves and has a hunger for meaning and purpose we're, we're always we're always looking to find meaning for for uh, everything we are destined as a as a species to look for meaning and purpose in a universe that is inherently cruel, unpredictable, and completely apathetic to our existence, right? And the fact that we will most likely live our entire lives, our entire lives, we're going to live and die, and we'll never work out what any of this is for, what any of the purpose of any of this is for. So Camus in thinking of these things, basically said, assuming all of that is true, you really only have three courses of action. Just three. The first one, you're just not going to play in this game, right? You're not going to get these answers. You're going to, you're going to torture yourself. So just end your life, commit suicide, which obviously seems uh, a tad extreme, but an option nonetheless. Two, actually take the leap of faith and believe in something that, that claims to have some meaning. Well, now, again, whether that's uh, some deity that wears funny hats, uh, or perhaps maybe we're part of uh, some strange alien experiment, and that gives your life some sort of meaning and purpose, um, okay. And then the third, he argued, um, absurdism, which is basically the full acceptance, the full acceptance that we will never obtain absolute truth and purpose about life and, and the universe. It's just not going to happen. And, and if you, part of accepting that, which is what nihilism is, right? They believe, like I said before, they believe in nothing. But instead of surrendering to that, that internal burn of nihilism, you choose to live in, in, in spite of that uh, uh, desire just to say, I believe in nothing and, and just sort of uh, enjoy and live your life knowing that you're not going to find out about the truth and the purpose of, of, of any of it. Now, now, this Camus cat said, the only way to deal um, with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. It's the only way. It's not the meaningless of, of life that hurts, it's, it's the contradiction of needing meaning and not getting it, right? It isn't, it isn't, it's not the, not having the um, meaningless that hurts. It's, it's needing meaning and not being able to obtain it. Um, particularly, I guess, if you're, if you're unable to let go of that contradiction itself, right? For, for example, why was there something or why is there something rather than nothing? Right? That's a fair, simple question, uh, which is really just a roundabout way of asking, well, well why are we in the universe and is, in it, is anything here? Which, which is what something an existentialist would ask. Again, beyond the deities and, well, because the good book says this or that, the, the more rational are like, well, I'm going down this path. What's going on? Uh, uh, and either the universe had a beginning in time or it had no beginning. Right, it either had a beginning or it had, it had no beginning at all. So, if everything, for argument's sake, began with the Big Bang forty million years ago, okay. So, by that definition, the beginning of time, there could not have been anything before that. So there was nothing, nothing but nothingness. But how can nothing create something to bang together? Right. So, okay, could there have been a, a quantum fluctuation or quantum fart just before the beginning of the Big Bang? But, but that's not nothing. That, that's a whole different something. And this kind of thought process only, only begets more questions. What, 
what became before that, before the fart, right? If there was a fart before the Big Bang, what became before that? Or, or maybe the universe has always existed, no beginning and, and, and no end. Now that sort of solves the something from nothing issue, but then, the, then was the Big Bang just one iteration in the cycle of, of the universe, right? It, it's just, it just continues to expand, collapse, expand, collapse, expand, collapse, rinse and repeat, right? Like the bottle of shampoo. But, but that doesn't work exactly. Is that some sort of weird perversion of, of general relativity, you know, Einstein's theory of uh, space-time? But, but did, the uni or, or, or did the universe create itself from the end of time? But that implies it would have a start. And if it was a start, there was a beginning. Well, then what was before the beginning? You, you start to see the circle. Even if the starting point is in our future, there was a defined beginning. And, it, and if it did, again, it would have come from nothing. So it, it, it basically, it's a paradox. It, you just, it's just one question after another. For, is, is, is matter infinitely divisible? Or is it finitely divisible? Can you just keep dividing? Just, you know, particles keep splitting, split, 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 split. And if we can, why? Why can we do that? How is that even possible? Is it possible that all events have already happened and we're just simply forced to live through them? And if so, why? So you can see existentialism starts to make your head spin. Is the present the only thing that's real? Hear me out. Is the present right now, is this the only thing that's real? Because the past is gone and the future doesn't exist at all, really until it gets here. But when it gets here, it's the present. And the second it's here and it's gone, it becomes the past. So it's much like a, if you're driving in a car going down the highway, looking through the windshield, that's the future. Looking through the Back window, that's the past. And sitting in the car, that's the present, right? So there's no future because the second, the future doesn't exist and the moment it comes into being, it's the present, but the second it becomes the present, it becomes the past. Suppose you could learn everything. How would you be sure? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do little kids get cancer and get sick and die at five? Why do, why do assholes sometimes win the lottery? Why, 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 you just ask why, 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 why constantly? And that's where absurdism comes in and just says, forget about all of that. Just live your life. Don't ask why and just focus on the sun, the beginning of the day, the end of the day. Um, the moon, people in your lives that you care deeply for, animals that you care deeply for. Focus on those things and don't ask these questions. And don't surrender to the life has no meaning because then you're trapped in a, in a what's the point of it all. You have to live your life from the standpoint of life maybe has no meaning. I'm not going to find out that answer, but I'm going to live and enjoy every minute right up to the very end, I think. I don't know. This is a weird video. Uh, this is the crap I think about when I sit at home alone. Uh, hopefully you got a kick out of this and it might cause you to dig a little deeper into some of this. Or maybe you're already an absurdist and you're like, Ryan, you're just being ridiculous. Drink your drink, watch your shows, and shut up. Which I guess is what I probably need to do. Anyway, in this world, when you could be anything you want, you'd be kind, you'd be humble, and you'd be forgiving. And uh, thank you for listening to me prattle on about this nonsense. I'm going to go try to read a little bit more and see if I can wrap my arms around this. Take care. Bye.